Baruch chapter 4, verse 18. For he that brought these plagues upon you will deliver you from the hands of your enemies. Barakatayahawa, Barakatayahawa Shai, Barakatayahawa, Barakatayahawa Shai, Barakatayahawa, Barakatayahawa Shai. Call Halal Lai, Yahawa Bashim Yahawa Shai. That's Hebrew. Interpret, bless Yahawa, bless Yahawa Shai. All praises to the Father Yahawa in the name of the Son Yahawa Shai. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's whole four elects scattered abroad, teaching his word and sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right, I'm the brother Taz of War from the GMS New Jersey camp, and this is going to be another lesson. And uh, this is in the, uh, the book of Baruch, the fourth chapter. And I uh, don't have a title yet, but maybe something around the lines. Uh, he will deliver you from the hands of your enemies, maybe, you know, and who is the he is Yahweh, which the world ignorantly calls God. His name is Yahweh and his son's his son name is Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. All right. And his people are the Israelites, which today are called the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native and Seminole Indians. These are the real Hebrew Israelites and God's chosen people. From Abraham, Isaac, to Jacob. And um, for the brothers that's awoke and the truth are enlightened in the faith of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, you know, remember the Lord is going to deliver us, man. You know, we might be uh, we might be on the low, we might not have nothing, but the Lord is our Savior. All right, He is our deliverer, He is our comforter. You know, and there's reasons why, you know, uh, you know, why we on the bottom. And the first is the blame is ourselves, you know, because it was us that sinned against the heavenly father. And that made the father put us through this, uh, this captivity, which we are in captivity now, you know, for, for those that understand, because you got a lot of Israelites. Well, let me say two thirds you call so-called Negroes, Latinos, all right? You believe that you're not in captivity and that, you know, this is the time where you're living and you're supposed to, you know, enjoy yourself in this earth. You know, you're supposed to go out and get a get a college degree and you're supposed to live it up, be all you could be, you know, be this te te television um, star, be this rapper, be this singer, you know, be this actor, whatever it is, man. When the Lord said, this is not our rest. All right. This is not our rest. This is our captivity. And uh, before this place go out, you know, it's going to get ugly for you so-called Negroes, Latinos. All right. And you so-called Native and Seminole Indians. All right. You Israelites. It's going to get ugly. But anyway, you know, those of the whole four elect, we have um, we have the. Uh, the scriptures say he have no need that he write unto us for ourselves know perfectly the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. So I just want to read here and uh, Lord willing I hope is uh, inspiring to those of the whole four elect. You know, it says uh, Baruch chapter four, verse 10. For I saw the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting brought upon them with joy did I nourish them, but sent them away with weeping and mourning. And right now we're still weeping and mourning, man weeping and mourning day by day praying you know that this year be the year the Lord fulfill the prophecies man he have these Edomites force the chip you know World War 3 go out with a bang and Jacob's trouble all of the prophecies man we're weeping and mourning man okay for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah you know there's no other nation that's weeping and mourning than God's chosen people and the world knows it the world knows that the Israel, the world knows that the so-called Negroes, Latinos, all right, West Indians and so-called Haitians, they know that we're the chosen people, man. Okay, when you look uh, according to statistics, I guess you want to call it, to the status quo, to the laws, to everything that that govern, to to the the paperwork that governs this this world. They document it's, it, it, we're, we're, The Israelites are on the bottom man We have nothing Nothing at all man Nothing You know 
We at the bottom of the total pole, man. We at the end of the stick, the bottom of the stick, man. Truly proving the scriptures of Deuteronomy 28. All right, the curses are upon us, man. We have to go to these Edomites for the want of all things. And now, you know, they, you know, Esau is, um, he's, he want more, you know, he wants to monitor everything, you know, he wants to monitor you and everything because he has this God complex in which he thinks he's God. You know, he wants to sit in the seat of the most high. But anyway, let's get back. It says, um, uh, with joy, verse 11, with joy did I nourish them, but sent them away with weeping and mourning. You know, you go back to 70 AD, Yahweh Shah prophesied 70 AD. You know, he told them to flee to the mountains. You know, they went out weeping and mourning. A lot of us went down into uh, 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 the west coast of Africa, the boatload of us, all right, the southern kingdom. You know, the northern kingdom was already here in the western world, all right. But this is all scripture, man. But just just knowing that the way we left our land and never to see it again, you know, even even though it still exists to this day and we're not in it, we don't rule in it. All right. We went out weeping and mourning. It says, let no man rejoice over me, a widow and for sake of many and forsaken of many. So like you. OK, it says, let no man rejoice over me, a widow. And forsaken of many who for the sins of my children am left desolate because they departed from the law of the most high you know so that's why it's important you know now to examine yourself to repent you know to come back to the Lord seek the Lord ten times more which I'm gonna read you know because it was us that broke the laws of the most high it wasn't Esau, it was us. Even though Esau is, is, is a, a, a hater, <laughs> you know, he's a true hater, you know, and a devil, a liar, you know, and we're enemies. But guess what? It was us that sinned against the Heavenly Father. It says, um, it says, verse, I'm gonna read 12 again. Let no man rejoice over me, a widow, and forsaken of many, who, uh, who for the sins of my children am left desolate because they departed from the law of the Most High. They knew not his statutes, nor walked in his ways of his commandments, nor tried it in the paths of discipline in his righteousness. Let them that dwell about Zion come and remember ye the captivity of my sons and daughters which the everlasting have brought upon them. So you're wondering, how do we get in this position? How How is it that we at the bottom? You know, well, the Heavenly Father did it. It was him that put us under these Edomites. All right, now you have Jake, you know, knowing they on the bottom, but they don't consider, you know, their fault. They don't consider that, that, uh, that, that we are better than the other nations. They don't really consider that, you know, because they have this feminine state of mind and this Western state of mind to where they think that, you know, we have to show compassion because everybody is equal <laughs> when they know that we're not even treated as equal. You know, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy how Jake is really drunken, man. Two thirds, I should say. Two thirds are drunken, man. They're drunken in their own filth, man. And this is all due to breaking the laws. The Most High have did a number on us, man. But guess what? The Lord is now recovering. Okay, He's renewing the minds of those of the hopeful elect of His people. Okay, because there is hope for us, man. We're not down and out. Okay, we're not done for. You know, even uh, Apostle Paul uh, made mention on that, man. You know how, you know, uh, there's nothing that can take us away from the love of the Lord. Whether we was forsaken, you know, whether we was uh, naked, apparel, you know, put against the sword. You know, the elect is uh, being truly woken 
by Yahweh Bashem Yahweh to come back. Because what the Lord is doing is establishing us as a nation of people. You know, not divided between each other, but he's bringing he's bringing that that uh that southern kingdom, all right, the, the southern kingdom and that northern kingdom back together, all right. In the times of David, the tabernacle of David, man, because after Solomon passed away, guess what? There was a split, man. Jeroboam and Rehoboam, Rehoboam, the splitting, the northern kingdom versus the southern kingdom. But now the Lord is done with that. We served enough, man. Lord knows we served enough punishment, man. So, you know, the Lord is back, man. And that's why the scriptures tell us in 2nd Edges, the ninth chapter, one of my favorite scriptures I probably quote all the time. The Lord is visiting this earth in which he made. And the water, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, for his do so. You know, for his namesake, the water. Anyway, let me, um, salak you because I'm driving. Bear with me. Want to get out of this traffic, Salakia? You know, let me get right back to it. Okay, this is uh, verse 14. Let them that dwell about Zion come. It says, let them about Zion come and remember ye the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting have brought upon them. For he have brought a nation upon them from far, a shameless nation and of a strange language who neither reverence old men nor pity child. And that's clearly talking about these Edomites, man. Okay, they are a shameless nation. All right, in their customs, they they practice in their customs naturally homosexuality, being a being a pedophile. All right, pedio a pedio is it? Damn, what is it? Pedosexual. Um, you know, they, they, their ways of life naturally is is as a beast, like a, a creature in the field, in the wild. All right, they are a shameless nation. It says, um, and of a strange language who neither reverence old men nor pity child. And Esau has no pity for no children. You know, he, he actually uh, gets a thrill out of killing children. All right. You know, blood doesn't, you know, uh, uh, softens his uh, heart. You know, he doesn't feel guilt. He's a bloodthirsty serpent, a dragon. All right. That's why his name is. Well, one of his titles is the son of the sons of perdition. All right. He's an evildoer. It says, verse 15, for he have brought a nation upon them from far, a shameless nation and a strange and of a strange language who neither reverence old men nor pity child. These have carried away the dear beloved children of the widow and left her that was alone, desolate, without daughters. But what can I help you? For he that brought these plagues upon you will deliver you from the hands of your enemies. Go your way, O my children, go your way, for I am left desolate. I have put off the clothing of peace and put upon me the sackcloth of my prayer. I will cry unto you, I will cry unto the everlasting in my days. Be of good cheer, O my children, cry unto the Lord. And he will deliver you from the power and the hand of the enemies. And I think that right there may be the title. Be of good cheer, O, o my children, cry unto the Lord. You know, because it's the Lord that will deliver us from the power and the hand of our enemies, man. And if you think that you're going to deal with these Edomites and these heathens, these heathen nations on, on your own will then you sadly mistaken because we surely need all right a power that's not that's not from this world to deliver us out of the hands of these enemies man and especially from esau and his technology which is his witchcraft all right we don't have shit man we ain't got nothing 
All we have is this word And all we have is our faith You know So don't let nobody take your faith away from you man Cause at the end of the day If you believe And you, you, you've been striving You know May the Lord have mercy man May, may the Lord have mercy all right. Because, uh, well, let me read the next one. It says, um, verse 22, for my hope is in the everlasting that he will save you. And joy is come unto me from the Holy One because of the mercy which shall soon come unto you from the everlasting of our Savior. So we got mercy that's coming toward us, that's coming directly toward us from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. And this is going to prove the most highest people and who they are and who he's for. All right. When the brothers receive spiritual powers, that is the mercy of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. When a brother get taken up on a chariot, you know, to not uh, be destroyed in, in the Lord's wrath and his destruction to come. That is the mercy of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Uh, when when, when um, thousands shall fall at your side and not touch you. That's the mercy of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man. From you to, for you to be hid from the from the scourges of the tongue, and, and from Esau's uh, 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 wicked mindset, man, that is the mercy of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, for you to eat and, and, and feast in a famine, and rejoice while while the world is in a famine, that is the mercy of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, it says, for I sent you out with mourning and weeping, but Yahweh will give you to me again. With joy and gladness forever So when our Lord return and crack those clouds Which Esau is afraid of We're going to rejoice man We're going to have We're going to have joy of tears man You probably Hey I can't imagine The uh, feeling that's going to go through your body man You know You know You ever been So rejoiced That you cried You know You look like you hurting But you So overwhelmed with joy You cry. That's what's going to be upon brothers when they see Yahweh Shah returning, man. Because we're never going to be in this ever this condition ever again, man. And man, I can't wait, man. Can't wait, man. Because this is a God-forsaken wicked world, man. You know, you really really live in the die. Without Yahweh Shah, you're living to die, man. You live, you're born, you die. The older you get, the closer you are to dying, man. The fools are killing us, man. You know? You got to watch the foods you eat. You think you're eating good. But you're not. You're dying, man. Well, and with the Lord, we're going to live forever, man. When Paul talked about defeating the sting of death, we're going to live forever, man. All praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right, this is um, uh, verse 24. It says, like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity. Yeah, these heathens see us in captivity under these Edomites. They know we don't have nothing. All of these different uh, 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 heathens, man. The Arabs, the Elamites, the Hamites, okay? Uh, the Moabites, the, Jeff, uh, the, the uh, Ammonites, the Moabites, the Chinese, man. All of these other nations that have their country and have power, they see us as slaves under this white man. All right. So-called white man. It says, like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity, so shall they see shortly your salvation from our power, Yahweh, which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of the everlasting man. Man, the Most High is going to do a great work with them brothers, man. He's going to do a great work in brothers, man, to 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 uh to bring his to bring his name glory, man. And that's how the Lord do it, man. He uses his his chosen to bring him glory, man. Because who's his shining star, man? Who is his shining star and precious uh uh precious metal, man? Okay, precious ruby. That's the Israelites, man. We have always been the Lord's chosen and we always going to be the Lord's chosen, man. You Edomites, you can't take us from our power. You can't take our love away from us from the Lord. You can't stop the Lord from loving us, man. 
Because is it not written? He said he does this for his name's sake. Because his name is in us. He signed off on us, man. He's chosen that that one uh uh that 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 one seed for himself. Okay? You can't trick the Lord. And that's why all of these things are happening the way they are, man. We're in a time of rejoicing, man. We're in a time, you know, it's a serious time, but we're rejoicing in that this is the end of Esau and Jacob is up next to follow. We're rejoicing because Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah is fulfilling prophecy as he told us. Okay? It says, um, like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity, so shall they see shortly your salvation. From our God, Yahweh, which shall come upon you with great glory and, and, and brightness of the everlasting. And I can imagine, I could just sit here and meditate just with this verse, man. And just zone out, daydream, man. And just 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 the images in my mind. I can't explain it. But I but I'm sure I can see it, man. Alright. I can't explain it and maybe put it in words, but I can see it. Verse 25, my children, suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from the Most High. So whatever it is that we going through and we got to go through, we got to just suffer it, man. Even if it be unto death, fuck it, man. You ain't got no choice but just to go through it because the Most High put it, put, put that lot upon you. You know, you can't run. We have um, Jonah for an example, man. Jonah is an example that when the Lord set his light upon Jonah to, to prophesy to Nineveh, Jonah tried to run. He tried to get out of that light. You know, he tried to go in the complete opposite di direction and where he had to go and tried to hide from the Lord. But what the Lord do? The Lord swallowed him up with a big fish. Okay. And brought him to the land where he was supposed to prophesy. You see? So you can't get out of this, this thing of the Lord. Whatever it is, man. Let me read that again. It says, um, it says, my children suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from the most high. It says, for thou enemies have persecuted thee, but shortly thou shalt see his destruction and shall tread upon his neck, man. Whoo, man. Because shortly Esau is cut short, man. Shortly you Edomites, you're going down through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. You are afraid of the chariots. You are afraid of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. You are afraid that the Lord is going to come back and take us away from you. Esau is afraid that the Lord is going to come back and take us away from these Edomites and put us in position over you Edomites, man. The world is about to witness Yahweh Shai's return, man. Let me say that again. The world is about to witness Yahweh Shai's return, man. When these prophecies be fulfilled, man. It's not too long left, man. It's getting ugly out here, man. You know? It says, verse 26, My delicate ones have gone rough ways and were taken away as a flock caught of the enemies. You see? The delicate ones, man. Okay? Most I said that we are special, man. And we're above you other nations, man. That's just what the Lord said. We couldn't make ourselves better than you. The Lord made us better than you. Even at our low, we're still better than you. So if you want to get mad, get mad at the Most High. Go see if you can punch the Lord in the face. Go see if you can, you know, jump up and try to strangle the Lord. Or try to shoot the Lord with a gun. Go try to shoot the Most High. Go try to shoot Yahweh Shai down, man. Go, go. Salaki, I'm getting excited, getting passionate. Because um, I hate this place, man. You know? Just want this shit to be over with, man. Anyway, verse 27. Be of good comfort, O my children, and cry unto Yahweh. For ye shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. For as it was your mind to go astray from the Most High, so be in return, seek him ten times more. So that's why it's very important to have the Lord, you know, in your, in, in your everyday thoughts. You know, sometimes, brothers, we don't have 
sometimes you get that little uh, drought where, you know, you don't know what lesson you should do. But that's, you know, that's going to happen. But the important is, is that the Lord is on our mind, man. The Lord is on your mind. You're not, you know, entangling yourself with the affairs of this world to where you're not thinking about the Lord. That's a big difference. You, you know, you can have someone that could be entangling themselves in the affairs of this world to where they're not even thinking about the Lord until it's time to go to camp. You know? But here it is, you thinking about the Lord, but you just, you know, might not know what lesson to do and what's going to be edifying, you know. You might even do a lesson, then scrap it, man, because I do that a lot. I do a lesson and I scrap it because I feel like, you know, you know, maybe that wasn't good, you know. And that's how it be sometimes, man. But the point of the matter is, is that the Lord is in all your thoughts. The Lord is on your mind, man, you know. That's important, man. That's important. Um, be of good comfort on my children and cry unto the most high for ye shall be remembered of him that brought these plagues upon you. So the Lord is remembering us right now while we going out there week in and week out prophesizing the downfall of this place, prophesizing the prophecies of the scriptures. And that's all we're doing is teaching and prophesizing. The Lord is remembering us, man. He have not forgotten about us, man. No matter how much Esau lie, no matter how much agents and whoever he bring out there and his rhetoric and his, his false doctrine, the Lord remembers us, man. The Lord is taking notice of us. He has always noticed us. But now we got the Lord attention, man, because the Lord is going to speed things up, man. We have the Lord attention. These Edomites are demonizing brothers, man. You know, they great. They going to great lengths to, to stage to stage uh, uh, attacks and blaming it on brothers, just teachers. When we we have no, you know, no ability to do such a thing, that means the Lord is paying attention to us, man, because the Lord is getting ready. The Lord, the Lord is preparing, preparing the stage, man, for the next step, for the next level, man. All right. It says, um, for that, for 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 as it was your mind to go astray. From the most high, so be in return, seek him ten times more. For he that have brought these plagues upon you shall bring you everlasting joy with your salvation. Take good take a good heart, O Jerusalem, and he that gave thee that name will comfort you. He gave us the name Yasha Allah, man. Okay, he prince power. We're the princes of the most high. But guess what? We're the princes right now walking while the heathens are, are sitting on horses. But the Lord is going to require the things of old and set things up right. He's going to put things in order so that the earth can be at his ripe state, man. So that everything can be in what? Righteousness, man. Governing in a way that delights the Lord, man. That pleases the Lord, I should say. Things are going to get right so that the Lord can be pleased and dwell with us forever, man. That's why we have to be. That's why the Lord is going to put us also on top because mm -hmm. he wants to enjoy. He wants to enjoy uh, being with us, man. The Lord can't enjoy being with us. Mm -hmm. The Lord can't enjoy being with us if we wicked and if we're not in order. But the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, is going to be with us. All right. He's going to enjoy being with uh, with his chosen because we're going to be made perfect, man. You know, let me. um um I'm going to wrap this thing up. Uh, this is Baruch chapter four. And uh, verse. Verse 31, miserable are they that afflict thee and rejoice at thou fall. Miserable are thou are the cities which thou children serve. Miserable are she that received thou sons. So miserable is going to be all of the heathens that enslaved us, man. Miserably, miserable is going to be you Edomite soon, man. It says, for as she rejoiced at thou ruins and was glad of thou fall, so shall she be grieved of her own desolation for it says for i will take away the rejoicing of her great mo uh, multitude and her pride shall be turned into mourning and and you know that's clearly talking about these heathens and mainly you edomites man because you said race it race it you said race it race it uh in a time when we was being sacked and being put into captivity by the babylonians man you know 
That reminds me of get, getting into Ezekiel, the, the 35th chapter. You know, the Lord remembers us, man. All right. And he remembers you, Esau. All right. E. <laughs> All right. Um, verse 34, for I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude and her pride, because Esau is the one that have great pride, shall be turned into mourning. Your pride. Donald Trump. Look at that man. When he go and speak, he speak with pride. You know, he's arrogant, proud, boast. He's a boaster. You know, it says verse 35, for fire shall come upon her from the everlasting long to endure, <laughs> long to endure. That's that's right. And she shall be inhabited of devils for a great time. O Jerusalem, look about thee toward the east and behold the joy that cometh unto thee. From, from the Most High. Lo, thou sons come, whom thou sentest away, they come gathered together from the east to the west by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the glory of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. You know, I hope this was inspiring. You know, I kind of got a little excited there, but it's all good, man. You know, um, you know, may the Lord continue uh, uh, and um, shortening these days for the elect's sake. You know, fulfilling prophecy. So, you know, with that, want to give all praise to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. Want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to the Lord's elect. Shalom.